Okay, in the previous session we talked about Riemann sums, and Riemann sums are talking about using a limit process to find the exact area under the curve. Kind of had a notation that looked like this. You're taking the area of each rectangle individually, you're adding them all together. Now, normally I would have an N here, but in this section we're introducing a new notation. Now this means norm, if you have a double absolute values around the P, this means norm. And what that is talking about it's talking about the largest partition or width. So when you're doing the areas, we always consider all of them to have equal widths, but it's not always uh, going to be the fact that you're going to have equal widths. You might actually have some that are unequal, and so if that actually occurred, that's why we have to define this norm by saying that if we have all these different varying widths, we want to look at the largest partition or the largest width, that's going to be called your norm. Now, of course, if you're going to take them all as uniform widths, all the, all the widths are exactly the same, then there's not one that's going to be the largest, and of course, their norm is just going to be the same thing as your uh, delta x. So for what we're going to be considering here, we're going to consider all of our widths to be uniform, and so therefore, uh, we can say that the norm is exactly the same thing as delta x. Now, if this is true, then we, we can make this statement here. What does this mean? This is saying that if the widths of my rectangles are all going to zero, that means that the number of rectangles is going to go to infinity. Now, the reason why we have that is because if you make the widths as small as possible, that means you can fit many different rectangles underneath the curve itself. So ideally, you want to try and fit as many rectangles as possible because you want to get the exact area. So essentially, I want to have my number of rectangles go to infinity in order for that to happen, that means the width of each of those rectangles would have to be as small as possible to fit as many as I can. Therefore, we can say this, as the norm goes to zero or as the delta x goes to zero, that means that the number of rectangles I have is going to go to infinity. So here's that notation using the norm. We can say that limit as the norm goes to zero. This notation is exactly the same as what we've seen before in a previous section. The difference now is instead of having n go to infinity, instead we have the norm going to zero, which essentially means the same thing. We can just say that, okay, as norm goes to zero, we can assume now that n is going to go to infinity, the number of rectangles is going to be infinite. But we're going to start moving on from this notation. Trying to do this kind of process takes a long time, and we'd like to be able to do it a different way, and this is where we're going to introduce back in notation that you've seen before. We've been working with antiderivatives, and we did talk about this notation before, but we didn't really derive where it comes from. So the reason why we're working with limit process is because now you can see actually where this notation comes from. It comes directly from the limit process. This big symbol right here, integrand, it actually is a type of summation symbol in a way. We're adding up a bunch of areas. Here's your f of x, which is your original function. Your dx is actually going to be the same thing as your delta x, and we talked about that before in a previous section as well. So we're going to be converting. If we can convert a limit process problem into this one, then we can do it with antiderivatives like we talked about before. So let's start looking at some problems that have this notation. So we're going to start with, I'll do one. That's another limit process, but then we're eventually going to start moving on into this notation, and we'll be using that for the remainder of this course.